Hello, this is Michael for the Art of Outdoor Survival Skills. I know I'm doing a lot of videos that uh, I'm not really outside. I'm sitting in my tent, but um, I don't have a video camera that can go out there and show you stuff. I got a guy that's going to help me. But this is part three of medicinal, edible, and useful plants. If you haven't watched the, the first two, you need to go back and watch those the medicinal plant. Um, one of talk about my experiences with edible plants and do's and don'ts. Um, I've had 25 years of experience with this stuff, so I know a lot about it, but um, there's a lot of tricks to the trade that you want to consider while you're doing this. Uh, a lot of people will say that, you know, whatever that birds can eat or the animals can eat, the human can eat. I'm going to tell you right now, that is a misconception and can literally get you killed. Um, here, up in the Smoky Mountains, when it's hungry, doesn't have a lot of food during a drought or something, will eat mountain laurel or rhododendron leaves, and it could literally kill the deer. But um, um, if you eat those, because um, you've been exerting that deer, uh, you're going to die. Your plant is simple. You're going to die. And um, there's a lot of berries that birds can eat that we can't eat. And um, so when you so you're really watching the wildlife. Yeah, that may be a good indicator, but there's a lot of variables there that are extremely uh, dangerous to a human. Um, they have a lot of ways of processing poisons that we don't have. You know, they have different stomachs, um, systems that can deal with poisons, poisons a little bit better than we can as humans. And so um, when you're um, going out indoors, there's also another thing you got to think about. There's pesticides, there's herbicides. You know, if you're gathering healthy plants and you're gathering uh, plants that you know that are very edible, but you're not making common sense that, hey, this is, this is a schoolyard, somebody's putting fertilizer out here to plant herbicides, um, try to keep the dandelions down. If you go eat the, um, the sweet barrel grass out in the field like that, you're getting those um, herbicides inside you as well. Another thing is, is um, eating plants on the side of the road. There's a lot of nitrate buildup um, that can hurt you. There's a lot of lead from the old days when um, lead cars were um, putting out lead into the ground. There's mercury that can get in the water. There's mercury that can get in the soil. Um, you got to understand things like that. You don't really want to be digging around the trash pile. Um, community to find edible plants. That's not a wise thing to do. Um, there's a lot of um, um, plants that look like also plants. And I experienced this years ago. I mean, this is almost 20 years ago when I was up in um, Boston and I was down in Georgia as well. I started eating these things that look like strawberries. They have a white five petal flower. It's just um, I mean, they didn't have white, they had yellow flowers instead of white. And they had the same leaf pattern as a um, um, wild strawberry. And the fruit looked very similar. But there was one difference. Instead of having seeds on the outside of the strawberry, it had warts. And I was eating those left and right, and they tasted kind of like a cucumber. And I was like, wow, these are the most blandest strawberries I've ever eaten. Only to find out it was an Asian Indian strawberry. Um, too much of it could actually hurt your kidneys. And so when I learned that lesson, I was like, i got to take this a little bit more seriously what I'm doing, not to play around. Um, you got to be 100% sure of what you're eating. And if you're not 100% sure of it, then you need to step back, think about it, and come back to that plant later. You know, if, if you wait two or three years before you are certain that plant is the right plant, then you'll be okay. Then there's the um, parsley thing. You got um, you got wild carrots growing in there. You have parsley. You have cow parsnip. You got water hemlocks. You got poison hemlock, and they look very similar. And if you don't know the difference in between those plants, and you eat parsley, I mean uh, poison hemlock, you're dead. Plain and simple. And so you have to kind of take it very seriously what you're doing. And you know, when I go into the area, or I know I'm in a certain area that I want to stay in for a long time, you can go and get uh, different edible books like I showed you just a minute ago. 
And what you want to do when you concentrate, you can open up these books. And uh, yeah, let's see if you can see this. You can see the common name, which a lot of plants will have many different names, and then you see the scientific name right here. That's what you want to pay attention to is the scientific name. Don't forget about the common plant. I mean, there's plants that are called jasmine or mandarin that several different plants are. One is safe, one is extremely poisonous. And so if you stick with a common name, you're going to end up getting in trouble sooner or later. So you want to focus on the scientific name. And books that were written in the 1800s, 1600s, or whatever, uh, they're not going to have the same names, even scientifically. Um, the books that are written in their 20s are not going to be the same books, um, scientific names. They do change, so you're going to have to have variables there and, and watch out for that. And the best thing to do is you can get online, look up the scientific name, find all the resources that you can, or you can buy edible books and go to the library or buy books like this. And basically, this book here kind of tells me what it's good for, so I just underlined it. So well, if I see that plant and I have this book guide, I can instantly read it. If not, what I do is I'll, when I do internet research, I can just take the plant, um, stuff that I've learned, and write it down next to it. Or if I'm going to experiment with a plant, I can write, oh, this is good for firewood. This is not good for firewood. This thing will make great baskets. A lot of books don't have good information. So what I mean by that is somebody will read a book from somebody else. They'll never experience that plant out there on their own. And what they end up doing is just copycatting each other. And then somebody will copycat that person. And then three other people will copy those people. And they never, ever experience. And you'll get a long list of medical reasons why this plant is this. A lot of edible uses. But most people don't even know what they're talking about. And you find that in a lot of edible books. They're just junk. And um, a lot of wannabe um, ethnobotanists out there. And you know, a prime example is like the cabbage palm down in Florida and, and up to South Carolina, up from Virginia. And um, they said that the Indians would take the berries and, and, and the seed that's inside the berries, a little paper thin, little blueberry, purplish berry, blackberry, whatever you want to call it. It's got that paper skin, but there's a seed in it. That seed is so hard, you can't basically, the only way of hitting it, smashing it is with a sledgehammer. There's no way that you're going to get flour out of that. I don't know what the Indians would do it or how they did it. But even if you could grind that into flour, you're still not going to get any, any food source out of it. It's just too hard for your stomach to digest. But you can take what the book never mentions, all the books I've been reading, that you can literally take the skin, rub it off, put in some boiling water, and you end up creating a sai type of um, juice. Um, it tastes like dates and prunes very earthy, but it's, it's just as good as a site um, bearings down in um, South America, Central America and stuff. So you can actually use it for the same reason, high in antioxidants. But books don't list that, you know. They do list that some of the fruits are edible. They, that's as far as they go. They don't give you any kind of resource to how to prepare it. So you really need to go out there and experiment with yourself. And if you mess around with a plant that's very um, poisonous or something, you need to get experts to show you. And what I mean by that, you can get on YouTube. We got this guy out here on YouTube called Eat the Weeds. Um, if you look that up, you'll see that uh, he has like 200 plants that he's showing you how to use. He actually goes through it, shows you what you can do with it. That's a good resource. There's another one called Wild Living with Sunny, like the sun. And um, she goes out and all over the country and she experiments with plants. And that's a good resource too, if you're not very familiar. I can sit here and do it too. I will eventually if I get the camel for it. Um, John Camel from um, ArizonaBushman.com. Um, he's got a lot of desert plants that he likes to eat. He's on my friends list, so you can look down there and you can see him. And there's a website called Plants for the Future. And you can get on there and basically look at almost every edible plant out there, it'll tell you if it's, if it's poisonous or not. You can just copy that information into a book like this. The book I wish I had 25 years ago, it'll save you a lot of trouble. It'll tell you about a lot of edible plants that nobody even knows about. And it's called Botany in a Day.
And it's the guy's name if you need to know. But um, if I had this 25 years ago, I wouldn't have been spending crazy, maddening hours learning plants, reading books, textbooks, and all that. It gets a little kooky after a while. Um, but this book teaches you the basics of botany, which everybody should know. It tells you the lead patterns and all stuff like that. Well, the thing about it is this guy breaks it down into families, the plant families. And if you know the plant families, you can determine if a plant is edible, even if you've never tried it before. But what I'm talking about here is this guy. He takes a list. These are the mustard family. And it gives you the key things of a mustard family. Four petals, six stamen, um, two tall and two short. And it gives you the basic seed patterns, the basic flower pattern. And if you know, um, if you find that out in nature, and it's perfectly at that, that description there, then you know that um, those, that's a mustard family and that it's edible. Here it says that there's 3,200 mustard plants. Instantly, you know there's no poisonous mustard plants, and now you can identify 3,200 edible plants. Now, every one of them's not going to taste delicious. Not every one of them's going to be good to eat. Some are going to be so bitter you don't even want to eat. But instantly, if you can identify a mustard family, you can instantly know 3,200 plants worldwide that are totally edible. Here's another example. Everybody kind of knows the mint family. <laughs> You think of basil and stuff like that. That's mint family as well. But it gives you a certain flower pattern that you follow. It's opposite leaves and it's got square stems. A stinging metal will have square stems, but it won't follow the same um, leaf pattern. or won't follow the same flowers. But once you recognize the mint family, there are literally 3,500 mint species out there. And there's no poisonous one. Now, pennyroy oil will be poisonous in high doses, but besides the oil, all mint families are edible. So you can go into these books here, and you cannot find any information whatsoever on the mint family plant that you're looking for, but it'll break it up into families, like this is the lily family, and it, it will tell you instantly, you'll know that every one of those mint family plants are edible. And you can go play with it, experiment without getting yourself in too much trouble. But if you find the parsley family, uh, wild carrots, poison hemlock, you know, you better start doing a little bit more research and make sure that you know what you're getting into. But those simple, basic um, understanding of plant families and how they're broken down are very vital. And I wish, so wish I had this book. 25 years ago. I recommend anybody who's ever wanting to get started in edible plants to get botany in a day. You will learn so much. Read the book from the beginning all the way to the end. Do not skip around. Do not do anything. Make sure you get the basic understanding of botany. And you know, it's a little tedious in a sense, but he writes in a way that's very easy to understand. Um, besides that, uh, you ever eating a poisonous plant and you're getting a little scared and yeah, it's making you sick, first thing you want to do is vomit it up. Get it out of your system. And you can use different things to make yourself vomit. You can actually just stick your fingers down in there on hit, hit the back of your tonsils and basically you will vomit. Um, you want to eat high starch diet as well. I mean, get as much as potatoes, get corn stalks with something inside of you to absorb up those toxins. And also, you can take like milk vessel, uh, mandelion that will protect your liver and stuff like that. Always have that kind of on the side if you're experimenting. Um, charcoal absorbs poisons as well. So if you're, if you're getting sick, ground up so that fire with charcoal. Make sure you get that up. If you eat enough of that, you're going to end up vomiting. And that could protect you from actually dying. Uh, that's a good thing to think about when you're doing this. If you really, really want to know if a plant is edible, you don't, you don't have the knowledge. It's a life and death situation anyway. You're going to die anyway. The best thing to do is take minute little doses. And what I mean, take very small spec doses, no bigger than a pea. Put it in your mouth. Um, instantly, if you feel sick, stay the heck away from that.